Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Update. October is Domestic Violence Month at the New Bedford Women's Center. And with me today is Hassan Suto to discuss existing and new activities at the Women's Center, especially as we continue with providing services to residents while still living with COVID-19. Welcome back, Hassan. Thank you. I think it was, I kind of lost track of time with COVID. I think it might have been maybe even a year and a half since we've been together. Yep, it's been about a year. And um, quite a lot has gone lot. on, to say the least. Absolutely. Um, during that time, and I know that you received a promotion. I did. Yep. Yay. Thank so you your, very much. your new title is? education outreach coordinator so i oversee the education and outreach department all the community outreach mm -hmm. and prevention education strategies mm -hmm. awesome and education and outreach is everything for social service organizations so um, we're going to get right into it and talk a little bit about that and um so in this new position mm -hmm. um what are some of your outreach and education strategies that you've been using during COVID-19? Absolutely, so the community outreach piece has decreased a little bit while the prevention education piece has increased. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in a pandemic now, so people are being very cautious about gatherings and things like that. Exactly. So we've been really utilizing social media platforms to spread awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it's a national um, day to month actually to recognize mm -hmm. domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away at the end of October, but this is a good strategy for us to let victims know that there are services out there. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of other public health crises, we need awareness such as you having me on this show is a great thing because um, it's been proven that domestic violence can be prevented. And as part of that education and outreach, um, I have my own understanding of why people abuse mm -hmm. but in your research and in your work why do people abuse so there is no um, perfect abuser but abuse is about power and control mm -hmm. and abusers utilize power and control in many different coercive tactics such as isolation intimidation mm -hmm. emotional verbal psychological abuse and it really stems from a lot of issues within the person Sometimes they were um, a victim of domestic violence. Sometimes they witnessed domestic violence when they were um, a child. You know, um, children who are exposed to domestic violence are more likely to be in a domestic violence relationship as an adult exactly. or a perpetrator. Exactly. Um, how do we rate in Massachusetts? What does the data show as compared to the rest of the country? That's a really good question. So nationwide, one in four women will be the victim of domestic violence in their lifetime. In Massachusetts, it's one in three. And it's one in 10 men in the United States and one in seven in Massachusetts. So the numbers are a little bit higher in Massachusetts than they are nationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was domestic violence like? We talked a, a little bit about that the last time mm -hmm. you were here, but we're still dealing with COVID-19. So what is domestic violence like for you dealing with it while we're still dealing with COVID-19? It's a huge challenge because people are utilizing telehealth, you know, mm -hmm. virtual platforms. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing for the victims because they don't have to worry about transportation. They don't have to worry about childcare. They don't have to worry about time. But we also have to make sure that they're safe, right? We have to make sure that they're in a safe environment. So that's been a, a unique challenge. So we try to make sure that whenever we reach out to people that they are in a safe place um, to speak and we try to accommodate them. Some people rather do a Zoom meeting, some people rather do it over a phone. And I think it's given us more access to people because it's kind of easy to have an appointment over the phone versus driving to the woman's center and making the time to do that. So we're able to reach a much larger population of people. And I do believe that that is one of the benefits of COVID that all of us in the work that we do around education and outreach, having the availability of Zoom um, and utilizing that has mm -hmm. definitely been an added resource it has. for the work that we do. Yep. Um, so in your work, you work with 
various populations mm -hmm. in the education and outreach that you do. So let's speak about children. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see in the <coughs> clients that you serve um, the effects of domestic violence with children? So one of my roles as coordinator of education outreach is I provide sexual harassment trainings to seventh graders in the New Bedford Public School System mm -hmm. and healthy relationships to eighth graders. Mm -hmm. And I do see a lot of situations where kids are witnessing domestic violence okay. at home. One in 15 children are likely to witness domestic mm -hmm. violence at home. And a lot of those kids, Marcy, are uh, misdiagnosed with having ADHD. Mm. When you're a child and you have violence going on at home, mm. your brain goes into survival mode. Mm -hmm. And it creates a situation where the next day in school, you're tired, you're cranky, you can't focus. And mm -hmm. so you tend to be looked at as maybe, you know, um, the kid who's not really paying attention when the fact is, you're going through something that's traumatic and it's putting a stress on your brain mm -hmm. and you can't focus. Mm -hmm. So I think our work in the school is sort of helping to raise awareness for this issue so that kids maybe feel comfortable speaking to me after training or coming to the family engagement centers that mm -hmm. I service or you know having an open conversation with maybe if not their parent, maybe their favorite yeah. teacher or their grandmother or mm -hmm. guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And I, I've told you this before, your personality lends itself to, I'm sure that you. um, young people feel that mm -hmm. they can open up around you. And I'm sure with the training that you have, you can be in their presence and you, ident you can identify I try somebody to, yeah. that has been a victim. Yes. Um, so that's with children. What do you see with teens? Is it different? Is domestic violence different with teens and how they act out? It is different with teens. Teens are more likely to experience um, drug abuse, mm. sexual promiscuity. Mm -hmm. They're more likely. So for a girl who witnesses her um, mother being abused, she's, more, she's six times more likely to be sexually abused in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. For a boy who witnesses his mother being abused, he's more likely, he's five times more likely to be an abuser when he gets older. Mm -hmm. And that's really sad because it just continues a cycle of violence. Exactly. You asked me earlier about abusers and a lot of these abusers, they come from homes where there was violence. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, I can't stress enough how important primary prevention is being in the schools, raising awareness, doing shows like this. Mm -hmm. You have to remember Marcy that 20 years ago, it was seat belts. Yeah. and drunk driving and cigarettes and all that stuff has decreased as an effort with the primary prevention and public awareness oh, events such as this. No so doubt. No we're, doubt. we're kind of trying to use that angle. Absolutely. And the Women's Center has made um, great progress over the years, mm -hmm. um, you know, with domestic violence um, advocacy. So um, no doubt it is important. It is important that we keep, we keep at it. Um, so there are other populations too that I know that you're working with. Um, what about the LGBTQ community? Yep. Um, how does dom domestic violence play out with that, within that community? That's a very unique situation. We just had um, Pride Month in June mm -hmm. and we did some outreach. We do groups specifically for the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The LGBTQ community experiences DV and interpersonal violence, I'm sorry, intimate partner violence at the same rate as heterosexual people or worse. Wow. They have a unique situation because um, there aren't a lot of services for LGBTQ mm -hmm. clients seeking services. Maybe they're not out in their personal life. You mm -hmm. know, maybe they're worried about it affecting their job. So they have those barriers that they have to go through to get services. So one of our efforts is to make sure that we are inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it's the discrimination, discrimination. that that yep. population faces Absolutely. On, on a daily basis. Right. If you um, have pre-existing hardships mm -hmm. in your life, um, mm -hmm. economic issues, mm -hmm. socioeconomic issues, and now you put DV on top of that, it creates a really perfect storm for a disaster. Mm -hmm. The last time you were here, you talked about domestic violence with men, which mm -hmm. typically we think of domestic violence, we always think of you know, the, one, the uh, male as being the aggressor. Um, but you see that there is, there is a, a large population um, within men. So talk about that and um, you know, what, what are you seeing at the Women's Center with the men that you're Serving. You're, you're serving. Yeah, so nationally, one in seven men will be the victim of rape, 
that's sexual amazing. abuse that's or physical violence. Mm -hmm. You know, men are likely to come out because there's the image that you're macho. Absolutely. And we have to also keep in mind when we think about intimate partner violence and domestic violence that it's not always just physical. You know, it's emotional, oh, it's financial, mm -hmm. and those factors affect men as well. We also serve victims of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You know, so some of these men, maybe they were sexually abused as a child. Mm -hmm. and now they are brave enough to come and seek help for that. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure, and that's part of my role too, to make sure that we do serve men. But the other side is I'm trying to mobilize men and boys to be allies mm. and to mm -hmm. speak up, to mm -hmm. not be a bystander, mm -hmm. to take an active role in preventing domestic violence and into intimate partner violence. And in doing that, do you have support groups for men? We don't have support groups for men yet, mm -hmm. but that is something that we're, we're talking about, yeah. And how does that work? Because the greater population that you serve is mostly women. It is. How does that work with, how would that even work with men coming to the Women's yeah. Center, or would that not happen? Would you have them go to another how would that work? So we, the support groups we have now, parenting, domestic violence, healthy relationship, men are invited. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, that hasn't been an issue. Okay. Even, even hiring me, like That's when great. I first started, you know, we would say, do you feel comfortable with a male or female? And if somebody said they felt comfortable with a female, we have plenty of female counselors, but it really hasn't been an issue. As a matter of fact, some people requested a male. Yeah, so they, awesome. if you are a victim of domestic violence or sexual assault or a secondary victim, Mm -hmm. we, we have services for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't segregate. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, myself included, there's many women who, some of our best friends are, are male, are yeah. men. And, um, you know, there's, there's an added value into um, the conversation right. and, you know, having our male friends. So I can understand um, the different perspective that one would That's get. True through a male counselor right. as opposed to a female counselor. Um, this is, as I open the show, this is Domestic Violence Month. Last year, you were not able, the center was not able to do a lot of the um, activities that typically they would do during this month. So what activities will be going on in the beginning of the month and the closing of yep. the month? So we have a really um, interesting situation here because last year we did a domestic violence awareness campaign that reached almost 80,000 people. Awesome. So we're emulating some of that. So I'm going to be working, I am working with the New Bedford Police Department. Mm -hmm. I am on their Human Trafficking Task Force. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing some interviews with them mm -hmm. that we're going to put on social media. I'm working with the YWCA on a week of violence, so I'm going to be a guest speaker on their panel. Awesome. We're actually doing an event at Normandon Middle School on October 29th. Mm -hmm. to raise awareness mm -hmm. and I'm doing an event this month at New Bedford High School with um, South Coast, Krav Maga South Coast. So I'm going to do a little bit of healthy relationships and he's going to do a little bit of the self-defense piece mm -hmm. and all that stuff will be on the Women's Center Facebook. Mm -hmm. And would some of these presentations that you're doing, will mm -hmm. they be on YouTube or social media so that they can be shared and others can get some of that? Um, education and training. Yes, it's going to be all over Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our so we post on our Facebook and we share stuff. And a lot of the organizations that we collaborate with have agreed to share our stuff too. Mm -hmm. Will there be the uh, march at? There, there won't be a march, okay. but um, John Mitchell, Mayor John Mitchell, is doing the proclamation for us, and he's going to light the tree purple for us awesome. for our Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Well, that's great because we always look look forward to that. Absolutely, the vigil um, is a huge thing for us. So is there anything else um, new on the horizon at the Women's Center that you'd like to share or talk about that we didn't touch upon? I would just like to share that when you think about the Women's Center, don't just think of women, think of LGBTQ people, think of children in the school, think of you know um, a grandmother whose grandchild was in a domestic violence situation and She's having some situations where she feels like she needs to speak because we have funding for secondary victims. All of our services are 100% free. Mm -hmm. We don't take insurance. We have language capacity for English, Spanish, Cape Verdean Creole, Quiche, Haitian, oh, Portuguese. Wow. That's amazing. It is, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. So if you know somebody who's a victim of domestic violence, make mm -hmm. sure that you 
you know, when you speak to them, they're in a safe uh, space to speak. It's important to believe them without judgment, but to let them know that bias isn't okay and share some resources with them and just be there for them. And we need, Hassan, we need to get back to that. I, and I know we talked about this the last time. Um, I am my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. And it's so important in communities and neighborhoods for people to just pay attention to each other and what's going on with people living in your neighborhood or right. around you. Um, you know, so often we, we're just, you know, we, we, we're just so disconnected mm -hmm. with people around us. And I think we need to get back to that, caring for each other, spreading kindness, um, and, and just paying attention and calling somebody if you see something that just, if it doesn't seem right, it probably isn't right. I just want to piggyback on that. Because of coronavirus, a lot of people are unemployed or working mm -hmm. at home. So before, mm -hmm. Maybe these people would have sent a kid to school or they would have went to work and mm. maybe their physical abuse symptoms would have been seen by somebody and reported, but that's happening less and less because we right. don't have as many eyes on people as we did. So I think it's important for people to, if you, if you hear something, call 911. Mm -hmm. You know, if you suspect somebody in your family, don't force them to disclose, but have a conversation and let it unfold naturally. But mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more with you about not being a bystander. Right, right. And so your web page, um, I'm sure there's, I know there's a wealth of information on your web page yep. about your services. There is. We're actually redoing it as we speak. So I'm excited about that. And I'm, are you involved in redoing it? Yeah. Well, you know, that's the value of also having young people um, in the work environment because mm -hmm. you all come with those those skills and what a wonderful way to do outreach and education um, through utilizing the tools that are available to us. Thank so you. we look forward to that. And your web page is? The Women's Center uh, Facebook. Okay. And if anybody wanted to call the Women's Center because as we've identified, they see situations mm -hmm. that are concerning to them. Yep. What is the number? So can they we, reach you directly? They can. So we have a 24-hour hotline. Mm -hmm. It's 999-WOMAN. Mm -hmm. And you can call that number anytime, and you will be speaking to a live counselor. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, this work that you do, Hassan, is very important work. Thank you. It takes a lot, I'm sure, yeah. out of you, the things <laughs> that you see. So what do you do to escape? What, how do you find enjoyment? How do you get away from drawing and writing? Off. Yes. Drawing and writing mm -hmm. has always been a thing for me. I used to do spoken word and I used to make music. So now it's all about like my sketch pad, drawing and writing. I think self care is important for all people, especially Absolutely. people who are under a lot of constraints because of the coronavirus or whatever they're going through in their life. So even if it's 10 minutes a day, you have to find time for yourself. If you have children, you have to figure it out. You have to find time for yourself. You are so right about that. I, I think that's another added benefit of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic that people have learned mental health yeah. and wellness, self-care. Right. Um, you know, finding that time to, to escape from the family, mm -hmm. from the children, because everybody was cooped up together. So I think that people have um, you know, learned more things about themselves or tried things, I new think so. things. I do, yeah. You know, and I, I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, we have to find the silver lining. Mm hmm absolutely. Well, once again, it is just so wonderful to have you come back. Thank you so um, much. And catch us up to speed on what's going on at the Women's Center and um, feel free feel free to always come back here. I appreciate that. Um, and let us know about what's new. And um, I'm so glad you're where you're at. Thank and, you. And doing this important work. Thank you so much, Marcy. Thank you for watching. And we will see you next time on Neighborhood Update.